Hey y'all, it's Hunter Elliott with RangeHot.com. Hope y'all are doing well. This afternoon I'm finalizing my review of a relatively new rimfire silencer from Liberty Suppressors, and this is their Vector. Got this a couple months ago. Myself and several of my friends really been doing our due diligence. We got about a thousand rounds through the can of various rimfires. Primarily 22 long rifle subs and supers using the Ruger 2245 light as well as the Ruger 1022 takedown light. But also, right much 22 Magnum using the Keltec CMR30. So, with that said, it's labeled 22 long rifle, but this silencer is certainly rated for a vast array of rimfire cartridges. Let's talk a little bit about the specifications of it, and we'll get into the different technologies that's used in this can. So right off the bat, the length assembled as a whole is six inches. Now, there is a one inch end that can be removed and basically you lose an inch of the can and you lose two baffles and that makes it a little bit shorter but you also lose about five decibels of suppression so you have a couple options there there is a degree of modularity the diameter of the can is just over an inch and it weighs in at six ounces when it's clean now y'all know me i'm very neglectful on cleaning my can so this one is probably uh, approaching about 12 pounds <laughs> i'm just kidding but but anyway i am kind of slack on cleaning cans and there is some technology involved with the silencer that makes things a little bit easier for my life so let's get with it it, it doesn't use a monocore baffle like you're used to seeing liberty does this is basically a baffle stack that creates its own tube so this exterior aluminum housing is basically just a housing to hold the baffles together and i'll get with it and i'll show you what i got going on here so to disassemble the rear end cap liberty sends this little anodized aluminum tool and it just kind of threads right in here to the back of the can and that takes the end cap off it's a little long-winded and then the baffle stack itself comes out and you can see here it kind of does makes its own tube and then, like I was talking about earlier, this back comes off. There's two baffles involved with this. And then you just take a 3 8 ratchet here and take the front end cap off and you can push them out. There you go. Like I said, it's, it's pretty dirty. So, so that's, that's it disassembled. Now, if you wanted to run it short, Basically, you just take your uh, your front cap here that Hunter has already lost. There you go. And you just straight it on the front of the can. Obviously, with the baffles installed. This is for demonstration purposes only. And then that... And now you've got that. Like I said, it's an inch shorter. A little bit easier to wield, but you are sacrificing approximately five decibels of... Suppression level depending on what ammo and host and all that sort of stuff. That's just a general rule of thumb speaking of suppression levels We got some sound meter numbers now, you know I have to add the disclosure that I do my sound metering a little bit different I have a sound meter that measures the entire pressure wave instead of the peak sound So basically whatever number my sound meter reads is what your average human would hear to their ear shooting some 40 grain Winchester subsonics it was coming in around 74 decibels, which is well below hearing safe. You know, your average conversation between two people is gonna run about 65 decibels, and your blender standing next to it is making about 90, so not bad at all. And these baffles are made of 18.8 stainless steel. You see, they come, they come apart pretty easy. And the reason of that is they have this gas dispersion ring machined into the stainless steel back of the baffle. And what that does is a lot of the fouling is dispersed away from the joints where the baffles meet. And here again, it just makes it a little bit easier to get apart. And the way they design the baffles, they create their own tube. So you're not getting much of all any fouling inside the tube as compared to your standard type baffle stack. And that makes it easier for disassemble. Now we took it out at 25 yards and shot some rested rounds from a handgun here. Didn't affect accuracy or reliability as expected. We took it out with the Ruger 1022, shot it at 50 yards. Here again, didn't really affect any kind of accuracy or reliability as you'd expect. Really digging not only the modularity of it, because you can, like I said, remove that end cap and shorten the can by an inch, which, you know, every little bit counts. 
but the fact that it does make it a little bit more easy to service i mean you don't have to if you do kind of go over that three four five hundred round threshold of cleaning your can you know you're not having to soak it in, in marble mystery oil and, and spend a day getting it apart it still will come apart now here again you know take care of what takes care of you you certainly need to stay on top of maintaining your silences and cleaning but if you're like me and a little maybe forgetful i'm getting old <laughs> and a little slack because i've always been slack then you do have a little bit of what i'm going to call a buffer area so you can still get the can apart took it out we did a couple mag dumps with the 1022 as well as a couple 30 round mag dumps with a Keltec CMR 30 with 22 mag. I mean, back to back to back. We got it so hot I couldn't touch the can, but looking at it now, this is the second time it's been apart. I had it apart maybe after the first 100 or so rounds, and as expected, it's held up well. So I got something else on my mind, and I'm going to be brief, I promise. I'm going to do my best to be brief. Silencers are really cool, they're a lot of fun, and I get that. But the benefit that I see to them more so than almost anything is they make a fantastic training tool, especially for someone who is very noise sensitive. You've got someone that, you know, you don't have to, if you're using subs and you're keeping it hearing, hearing safe, then you can, you can instruct your, you know, your, your mom or your son or, or whomever, you know, you can do your instruction without any kind of hearing protection, run it with a silencer on it, and you're not getting that report which tends to make new people and some people a little nervous. So there's a huge benefit in a training tool. I'm very disappointed that the Hearing Protection Act did not pass. I think it's ridiculous as hell that silencers and short barrel rifles and short barrel shotguns are NFA items. I really do. I would love to see that change. You hate the rules, but you still got to play by them, unfortunately. So that's where we're at with it. But I would encourage everyone to call your representatives. Maybe it's too late to get it passed now. I know we've had some unfortunate events take place that may would, would, would hem that up a little bit, and I think that's very disappointing, and it's of no fault of our own. So we, as a group of responsible gun enthusiasts, are being punished by the actions of the idiot few that, frankly, are going to screw it up for everybody regardless. So. Just rant a little bit about that. I, I think it's I think it's ridiculous that silencers are on an NFA list. I think you ought to be able to walk into a store and buy a silencer just like if you're buying a firearm. Suffice to say, I think a really good, solid first step would to be deregulate these things and to hell with that $200 tax stamp. I think that's ridiculous. This is a review of a new silencer from Liberty Suppressors. I'm not trying to hold y'all's ears hostage and, and bitch and gripe and moan about the law because like I said, as bad as you might hate it, it is the law, and unfortunately, we have to obey it. That's over. I'm done. Got that off my chest. In case you're wondering, I feel infinitely better, so thank you for that. I'm going to wrap this up before I tend to droll on. So anyway, hey, look, there's going to be an article on rangeout.com with a lot more of the technical specifications and that sort of stuff. So if you're curious, please jump over there and read the article. If you got any questions past that, please reach out to me. You can find me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Pinterest, Twitter, the whole nine yards. We do the social media thing. So let me know what you think, good, bad, right, or wrong. I always appreciate constructive criticism and that sort of stuff. All I want to do is continue to make the articles and the videos better so y'all will still come back and watch and read and give me your feedback. Appreciate that a whole lot. So look here, I want you to take care of yourselves and each other, and I look forward to seeing you at the range.